Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about something that I think a lot of fans are confused about or upset about. And that's in regards to the fight between Vader and Kenobi in the Kenobi show. I think a lot of people think that this is the last fight, this is the only fight, and it was very underwhelming and so on and so forth. And I believe that this is really just the preliminary fight. This is just essentially building the tension for the next fight and for the final fight. Maybe there will be three, but I think there's only going to be two. And I think this was to show this. I mean, it's it's kind of like my other favorite franchise, right? It's building it like Rocky. You know, Rocky goes in there, he gets beat up and then he comes back, trains, you know, and returns and just, you know, kicks butt. So I think with this, that's exactly what's going to happen. You know, Obi-Wan's going to be broken. He may reach out to Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon might actually reach out to him this time. Or what I would really prefer is if they do fight again and Kenobi feels some sort of a obligation that he needs to go and meet Anakin, maybe he can turn him back to the light side. Maybe he was just so sort of starstruck in the moment of seeing him and terrified that he just wasn't really coming to his senses or able to think or anything like that. He is really rusty. It's been 10 years since he's done anything to do with the Force that we know of. So maybe if he goes back and tries to turn Vader and convert Anakin back to the light side, like what Vader says to Luke in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, Obi-Wan once thought as you do. And maybe this is that scene that we're going to get where Obi-Wan is trying to turn Vader, being like, it's not too late, you know, let go of your hate, all this stuff. And Vader's just like not having it. And he's just, I'm going to destroy you. And what if in that fight, Obi-Wan is completely being destroyed and being beaten. And in this moment where he's, com you, you guys ever seen Rocky V where he's just, you know, like on the ground and then he hears Mick and like you got the like the subway station or the the, the, the sky train station going up overhead and it's like get up you son of a because Mickey loves you and it's like what if we get something like that from Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan's just like ready to just die he's just laying there and he is ready for Vader to just maybe standing over him and he's just gonna like chop his head or something samurai style and maybe Qui-Gon in that moment speaks out to Obi-Wan and gives him a few words of wisdom. And I could see that being really emotional, really beautiful, and really moving. And I think that could give Obi-Wan the motivation that he needs because in this time he's felt so alone. You know, I don't even know if he's been reaching out to Yoda or speaking with Yoda. Probably not, because the Empire would pick up on it and feel it. If you're reaching out to someone halfway across the galaxy or whatever it may be, I think, you know, someone powerful will eventually be able to um, feel that, like the Emperor. You know, of course, in this time, Obi-Wan thought that Vader was actually dead, that Anakin was dead. So, I didn't think he anticipated maybe Anakin picking up on it, but maybe the Inquisitors, if they're powerful enough, or Sidious. The reason I know that they're going to fight again is because of canon, because of what George wrote. You know, in episode four, he wrote Vader and Obi-Wan fighting. And of course, Vader says that line, which is, the last time I left you, I was but the learner, but now I am the master. And so, because of that line, they have to fight again, and Obi-Wan has to win. If he doesn't win, then that line won't make sense. I mean, they could do something where it's a stalemate or Vader wins again, and then we see them fight perhaps in like Andor or something, or maybe season two. I don't know. Who knows what happens? Ewan did tease that we're going to be getting episode 7, 8, 9, 10, but I think he was just, you know, trolling us the whole time. So I, I don't really take any uh, merit. In, I don't take much into what he said there. Now, I think this next fight will be probably what we've been all waiting for. You know, it'll be what I'm hoping is Nick Gillard style of choreography of uh, sword fighting. And if you don't know who Nick Gillard is, shame on you. No, he's the guy who worked on Ewan and Hayden, basically everybody in the prequel trilogy for um, stunts and swordplay. He's a master swordsman. So he, I feel like, would have really added a lot to this show in terms of choreography. And uh, of course, you know, he's not the only guy in the world that knows how to do that, but he is one of the best. And I do think that the prequel choreography was some of the best sword fighting that we have ever seen in movie history. You know, I mean, that, that fight on Mustafar with Anakin and Obi-Wan, I think that's very difficult to beat, you know, um, choreography-wise, everything else-wise too. But um, even if you're not a Star Wars fan, I think you can really appreciate that scene. And I think, and I might be very mistaken here, you guys can correct me, that that was actually the longest sword fight in movie history. Is that right? 
Anyways, it felt like that. Going into this next battle, I think Obi-Wan will seek Vader out, perhaps on Mustafar. I could really see him doing something like this, you know, where he's got maybe two episodes to think, he's got four and five to think that he can actually change Anakin, he can turn Anakin back to the light. And so maybe he's going to realize or he's going to ask around and find out that Vader is on Mustafar and he's going to be like, oh my God, like, of course, it's so obvious. I have to go back there. And he goes back there or he gets captured uh, and goes back there. I mean, either way, I feel like they're going to fight. It's got to be somewhere more exciting than just that. Like my friend called it the uh, the, the scene from Dirty Harry at the end where they're just uh, shooting out each other. But it kind of looks like that. It looks like just like some some construction site with sand and like a crane in the background. Just It didn't look very Star Wars. That's for sure. Uh, they definitely could have done a better job with that. Maybe some elements in there that could have made it a little more alien-esque or a little more, you know, out of this planet. Uh, but whatever. I hope that the next one will be on Mustafar or some sort of a, some sort of an alien planet itself that takes us out of this one that we're in. So while this last fight was pretty underwhelming uh, in terms of Kenobi's abilities, I think the point of that is to portray that he is really weak that he is completely not the Obi-Wan Kenobi that we know him to be from the Clone Wars, and that's what makes it interesting. I mean, it would still be interesting if he was, you know, full power like he was in Revenge of the Sith. I think this makes for a much better arc in the sense that he's now going to be able to overcome a lot of obstacles, a lot of the depression that he has, and rightfully so. I mean, the worst things have happened to him. He's lost the people closest to him, and the whole galaxy is essentially under the rule of a, a tyrant. I can understand why he feels the way he does, and, you know, he's hiding, you know, always wondering if you're going to be found or attacked or whatever. I'm sure he's going through something that's very difficult and it eats away at you over the last decade. So for Obi-Wan to turn from this very melancholy, very negative or very depressed and beaten man who's given up into the hopeful and powerful and heroic Alec Guinness Obi-Wan Kenobi in A New Hope, I think there needs to be some sort of a, um, a, a character development and evolution here. And I think the only way to do that is to really put him down a bunch of pegs in order to get him up to that point and that level where he, we know he's going to be. Otherwise, it just, you know, he's just stagnant and, well, that's just not really exciting. So in this next fight, I would love to see him believe in himself a little bit more. And I think he needs a little bit of motivation and encouragement. And I think that he's going to get that from his old master, Qui-Gon. Just as Yoda said, training I have for you. Teach you to commune with your old master, Qui-Gon. And so I think that we're finally going to hear our boy or see him. And that's the interesting part is that in canon, from the book from a certain point of view, which I know they don't really care. They just kind of like go against comics and books and stuff. But in that book, he didn't materialize in the flesh uh, to Obi-Wan until just during A New Hope, um, just before he saw Luke. So if they're going to show Qui-Gon Jinn in the corporeal form, then that'll be interesting because we also know from the Clone Wars, he never was able to manifest his true form, his body. He was just a voice, you know, he was just an orb floating in the force so it'll be interesting to see how he actually completes that training which he learned from the wills if you've seen the clone wars episodes anyhow that's my thoughts on this final fight i don't think it's done i think that was merely just an introduction and i think the true fight is really just a few episodes away so um stay tuned you know strap in as they say i think it's going to get exciting i hope <laughs> please. <laughs> Anyways, uh, glad to see our boys back again. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and I'll see you all in the next vid. Until then, remember, the force will be with you always.